I think it is clear to believe in the power of ideas. Fresh, thank you for the Manhattan Institute. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that uh, kind introduction. Um, since you brought up Mondale, <laughs> I'm often asked, how do you go from Walter Mondale to Fox News? The answer is simple. I was young once. <laughs> I have some breaking news. I was asked by the board of directors of the Manhattan Institute to announce that the 2016 Riston Lecture, <laughs> don't get ahead of me now, has been awarded to the city of Chicago. <laughs> what sealed the deal, I'm told, was that President Obama's personal appeal was persuasive. Michelle's outfit was outstanding <laughs> and sleeveless. <laughs> and Oprah made them cry. <laughs> However, the clincher was Rahm Emanuel. His presentation, I'm told in confidence, was the most persuasive since the 1996 Riston Award was awarded to Brooklyn after a particularly persuasive presentation by John Gotti. <laughs> I knew you'd like it, Robin. I could go on, and I'd like to. But these are easy. You can try these at home tonight. <laughs> but I do have a lecture prepared. The topic of the lecture is American Decline, and the title is Decline is a Choice. The weather, the weather veins of conventional wisdom have kicked off another round of angst about American in decline. New theories, old slogans, imperial overstretch, the Asian awakening, the post-American world, inexorable forces beyond our control bringing the inevitable humbling of the world hegemon. On the other side of this debate are a few, notably Joe Jaffe in a recent essay in Foreign Affairs, who resist the current fashion and insist that America remains the indispensable power. They point out that these declinist predictions are cyclical, that the rise of China and perhaps India are the current version of the Japanese panic of the late 1980s, or of the earlier pessimism captured best by Jean-Francois Ravel's How Democracies Perish. The anti-declinists point out, for example, that the fear of China is overblown, is based on implausible assumptions of indefinite, uninterrupted growth, ignores accumulating externalities like pollution, which can be ignored when the growth starts from a very low baseline, um, but ends up making the growth increasingly chokingly difficult, and overlooks the unavoidable consequences of the one-child policy, which guarantees that China will get old before it gets rich. Just as the rise of China is a straight-line projection of current economic trends, American decline is a straight line projection of the fearful, pessimistic mood of a country war weary and in the grip of a severe recession. Among these cross currents, my thesis tonight is simple. The question of whether America is in decline cannot be answered yes or no. There is no yes or no. Both answers are wrong because the assumption that somehow there exists some predetermined inevitable trajectory 
the result of uncontrollable external forces is wrong. 